Um, I don't know if anybody misses it when we're not on there or not, but we'll, we'll put it on there anyway. Um, this week I want to talk to you as best I can. I know that this year has been a tough year as far as losses of people I was thinking about. As Jill mentioned last week, um, all of the prayer warriors in my life that have gone on to be with God this year. Uh, I know there's others in your lives who have passed away. A good friend of mine just passed away last week. Um, just, uh, just, just yesterday. Was it yesterday or this morning? Tommy. Friday. 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 You know, Tommy passed away. Others, you know, in people's lives. This will be the first Christmas without um, without some of our loved ones. Yeah. You know. Um, Sometimes this time of year can be discouraging when you want to give a gift to someone and you don't think you can afford to give a gift. Well, I'll tell you, hugs don't cost a thing. And I love you doesn't cost a thing to pick up the phone and call someone. And even if the only thing you do is listen to them for a while, it doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to give a gift that costs money. But the, the, the subject I want to go over with you this morning is don't go into Christmas discouraged. Um, before you sit here and start feeling guilty about being discouraged or depressed or, or, or having bad days or whatever, let me remind you of a few people in Scripture who were up on the top of the mountain one day, you remember up on the mountain, Elijah calls down fire from heaven, something that had never been done before or since. A uh, great battle was won up there, and then within the next few days, he's hiding out in the wilderness wishing he could die. And if he really wished he could die, he wouldn't have run away, because Jezebel told him, I'm going to kill you. And if he really wanted to die, he would just stay there and say, well, have at it. But he took off running and hid in the wilderness and stuff. And you remember a little bit later, he was hiding out in the cave and whining about he was the only one that hadn't given up on God and stuff. So I don't care how super spiritual you are, you may have a bad day. You think about John the Baptist who, who had the courage to stand before Herod, one of the most wicked kings of all time, and said, what you're doing is sinful. What you're doing is wrong. And then when he was locked up in prison, he, he sent word to Jesus, are you really the Messiah? Are you really the one? You know, and there's times in all of our lives when we have probably wondered, is, is, is Christ really the answer? Is this Christianity really what it's all cracked up to be? You know, we, we have Simon Peter who whacked off the soldier's ear, was, was told Jesus, you know, if they get you, they got to go through me. Mm -hmm. Then the next time you see him, he's standing out at the enemy's barrel cussing and saying he, he never knew Jesus. So, before you, before you get all feeling guilty about having discouragement in your life, remember some of God's choice servants uh, had days of discouragement. Doesn't mean it's right. I'm just saying you're normal. And so um, we, 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 have a, we have this year, and we have, we have the times that we're living in. You hear preachers all over the land screaming, we're in the last days, we're in the last days. Uh, there's going to be a great falling away. Things are going to wax worse and worse. We're going to, we're going to, and, 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 and the news of the last days to someone who isn't looking forward to that blessed hope can be scary. And somebody who isn't walking closely to God can look at our current situation and say, my God, everything's falling apart. But in reality, the worse things get, the closer he is to getting back here to get us. And so, and then we have our, our situations, maybe our financial situations. We've had several this morning who, who are out sick today. We've had several who are, who are having job opportunities today. We've had several who are, are terrified of, of losing a child. We have others who are terrified of raising a child. We, you know, we've got all kinds of situations and circumstances going on in our lives. Uh, sometimes our, our finances. Sometimes this time of year, especially for, for, for single, par single parents, uh, the finances of Christmas when you want to give your child everything there is to give and you just don't have it. It's not about the gifts, folks. It's not about the money you spend on them. It's about the love you give to them all year long. Mm -hmm. And so you can't buy a child's love. Children know the difference between a gift and somebody who loves them. 
when I was working down in the school, we'd have dads who, who hadn't been in their kid's life in a year or two, and they'd pop in, and, and well, I'm going to give my kid a birthday kid. Well, when's his birthday? Well, I don't remember exactly. Uh, you know, it's just, anyway. Uh, then pain. Pain sometimes. Uh, you know, I live in, in pretty constant pain. Others of you in here live in pretty constant pain with, with your backs and your necks and your shoulders and, 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 and your children and your wives and all kinds of pain that you live with, you know. Um, and, and that can cause discouragement when you have day-to-day never-ending pain, day-to-day never-ending sicknesses. And then you have some, your, your actual serotonin levels are off-centered. You know, there is a chemical imbalance in your brain. Uh, then you have others, and several of us here uh, suffer with PTSD, things that have happened in our lives that have affected our, our mental situations. And then postpartum depression. I've talked to a young mom and just in the last couple of weeks. They're dealing with their postpartum stuff, you know? And, and, and I can't understand. I, a lot of the other stuff I can understand, but getting that 20-pound rock out of your gut and out into the real world, I don't understand how you can be depressed about that. <laughs> it, you know, it, it's a real thing. And unless it's dealt with, it can really harm you. Yeah. And so, so I want to talk to us this morning about not going into Christmas discouraged. We have the situation we're going to be talking about this morning. The time period is when the Jewish nation was under Roman oppression. Um, they were in, in extreme taxation. They, had, uh, they could come to your house and any time they wanted to and make a soldier out of your child. Um, they in, not only in addition to the financial taxation, they could come and take your cow. They could come and take your horse. They could come and take whatever they want. They could take part of your crops. They could take all your crops if they wanted to. And so, so that's the kind of oppression and discouraging time that the children of Israel were living in. The time period is much like our government today. They take whatever they want, and they're trying to get more and more involved in your lives and tell you what you can and cannot do and can and cannot have and, 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 and they're trying to buy they're trying to buy your vote both parties, I'm not talking about any single party uh, I was watching some of the Georgia runoff things this morning and you know they were talking about how we needed to support them and go to so and so dot com and make your contribution you know and, and so we have we have that, that kind of, of, of mentality going on with the children of Israel and with the Jewish nation, and one of Jesus' favorite places, don't you dare, that baby is fine. If they don't want to hear that baby t- crying, they turn their volume off. Maybe she wants acting. <laughs> if you need to feed it, you need to rock it, you need to walk around, you do whatever you need to do. You're not going to bother me at all. No. And anybody listening by way of internet, if you're using your kid as an excuse, you bring them on anyway. They're welcome here. And so... But we have, we have the Jewish nation in one of the most tumultuous times of their existence. And the place where Jesus chose to speak to them, I believe, was in the Mount of Olives. And that overlooked a whole bunch of different cities that were around. And in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, you see uh, Jesus called them together. And he did that famous sermon, the Mount of Olives sermon, the, the Beatitudes. Uh, But I want us to concentrate on a few verses this morning in chapter 6, beginning in verse number 25. And this was directed to the children of Israel who were discouraged. They were downtrodden. They were depressed. They had sadness for all kinds of different situations. And I would be willing to bet you that the situation you have today is no different from some of the situations they had. And Jesus was talking to them as friends. He was calling them together, and he said, I want to tell you something, guys, that will help you. And that's my goal for this morning, is to tell you something that's going to help you. Young mothers, you got to love them. These lights don't help when you're trying to put them to sleep. No. It's these lights, they, it, you like can't get a baby to sleep. It's like a real thing. And he could. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had no 
trouble sleeping in here. <laughs> Same. You get somebody else up here preaching. That's one reason I started preaching, because I kept falling asleep in all the services. What we have here, Jesus is talking to them. And he's not necessarily reprimanding them. He's just talking to them. And he's explaining something to them. And that's what I want to do for you this morning. I want to explain something to you. Don't go into Christmas discouraged. Don't go into Christmas depressed. And I'm not just going to leave you hanging. I'm going to tell you how you can not do that. Mm -hmm. Verse number 25, he says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought. See, most of our trouble is in our mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. That's why he says, By the renewing of your mind, be transformed. And he says, Take no thought, I say unto you, for your life. How many of you worried this past week about something in your life? Mm -hmm. Why? Did it, did, it, did it help? No. Did it fix it? Did it change it? No, it didn't. He says, take no thought for what you shall eat. We worry about whether we've got enough groceries or not. Luke worries about whether he's going to get enough deer or whether he's going to get enough elk. Aaron worried about we're going to have enough... Ty told me, I said, we got to get some more deer. Mama says we ain't going to have enough meat last year to win. Oh. Deer run around all year long. <laughs> <laughs> you get Rose out there on Highway 47, she'll get you all the you need. I'll get you raccoon. <laughs> yeah, it's all Daniel's raccoon. Or three. <laughs> he says, but take no thought. See, you got to, we read this and we don't pay any attention to it. But this is Jesus talking to us. He says, I'm telling you how you can fix your life. And I'm telling you, somebody who knows, because he came to this earth to die on the cross. Yeah. He came to this earth to be persecuted. He came to this earth to be tormented. He came to this earth knowing everything, and he said, don't worry about it. Take no thought for what you're going to eat, or what you're going to drink, or yet for your body, what you shall put on, is not life more than food or meat, and the body more than clothes. I was teaching the Sunday school class this morning. We were talking about the beginning of Genesis. They were all naked. And some of our teenage boys said, no, can't, you know, nope, ain't going there. But then it wasn't the problem that it is now. You know? it, but, but God said, it's not about whether you got on what's some fancy clothes. Eddie Bauer. Eddie Bauer. It's not whether you got on Eddie Bauer or Wranglers or Kirkland. I think the Kirklands are far more co uh, comfortable than the Wranglers anyway. Armani's, you know. What difference does it make whether you've got on Justin's or Ariot's? You know, it, it doesn't matter. Whether you've got on an I Love Me shirt or you've got an LL Bean shirt on, what difference does it make? God says we spend way too much time worrying about things that aren't important. And he says, take no thought for what you're going to eat. What difference does it make if you have beans and rice every meal? Dave Ramsey loves that. <laughs> you know? What difference does it make whether you've got T-bone or, or sirloin? It's all meat. You know, we, we get so bent out of shape about what, we, what, what, what quality. And I, I know food has to be good. But you don't have to have the best of the best all the time. Because who says what's the best of the best? Right. I love deer heart. Most people throw them away. <laughs> yeah. What difference does it make if it's Sarah Lee or Kirkland? Or what's the Sam's brand? Uh, Members Mark. 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 You know? yes. Members Mark toilet paper works just as good as Charmin does. Better. Yeah. You just, I mean, all you, your goal is just to get the brown off and you're okay. Mm -hmm. You know? But, but we, we spend so much time and effort and worry about things that aren't important. What difference does it make whether you drive a Mercedes Benz or a Pinto? And I know I'm dating myself with a Pinto. Or a Vega or any of those others, Gremlins. You know? but, but Jesus says, take no thought. Quit frustrating yourself about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear or what you're going to drink. Or what you're going to put on. Life is more than that. He says. He says. If you don't believe it. Verse number 26. Behold the fowls of the air. They don't plant. They don't sow. Check out the birds. 
I mean, how many people run around with million dollar binoculars and stuff just looking at birds? <laughs> because some, I mean, I got, I don't know if they're listening today or not, but I got friends over in the Philippines, they put on Facebook some pictures of some of the most gorgeous birds I've ever seen in my life. You know, Rose about freaked out this past year when we had four bluebirds living on the front porch. You know? Them little yellow finches come and land in my trees down at my kennels. And, you know, and I, I love them stupid little birds. Most, most people around here can't stand pigeons, but I love pigeons. They used to scare the manure out of me when I was living with my grandpa because my, my uncle told me that my grandma died in the room that I had to sleep in and the pigeons were roosting just outside that window and all night they went, hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> I thought grandma was coming and haunting me at the side. <laughs> Drank a half bottle of wine just to get some sleep every night. <laughs> I'm serious, I I was scared. Pretty soon I found out Grandma was more, <laughs> she was a lot friendlier than my wife. But anyway, <laughs> behold the fowls of the air. They sow not, neither do they reap, they don't gather in the barns. Yet your Heavenly Father, excuse me, your Heavenly Father? Your Heavenly Father knows how to look after you? God knows how to take care of us? God can provide our groceries? God can provide our fuel for our vehicle. God, God can, your heavenly father, no, it must be a misprint. Must be something wrong with the King James. Somebody else got something else? <laughs> heavenly father in mine. It says heavenly father in that one too? Yeah, heavenly father. Wow. So, so, so God takes care of birds. Well, quick question. Did Jesus come to die for the birds? So Jesus came to die for people, but yet he's going to leave us flopping around, worried to death? Don't go into Christmas discouraged because your Heavenly Father will take care of your needs. Don't go into Christmas discouraged because God knows all about your health. God knows all about your marriage. God knows all about your job or lack thereof. Which one of you, by worrying last week, fixed any of your problems? No, that's not what that verse said. Which one of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to a statue? Same thing I just said. Which one of you, by worrying yourself silly last week about whatever it is you worried yourself silly about, changed anything? Nothing. 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 Planning? Yes. Working as hard as you can? Yes. Mm -hmm. Taking care of your responsibility? Yes. About worrying about it? Take no thought. See, the Romans were all about materialism. That you look at the Colosseums and the, 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 the big theaters and stuff, all that mess they built back then. Jesus said, God will provide all you need. God's bank's not broke. Your bank account might be broke, but your God ain't. <laughs> I think one of the boys or something was talking to his mom about uh, getting something or whatever, and, and, and the, the mom told him, we, we don't have that or we can't afford that or whatever, and Papa can, or Papa has it. Or, no. <laughs> Daddy got it. I might not have it, but Daddy got it, and he'll give it to me when I need it. You know, I don't need next week's groceries yet. God gave them manna every day for 40 years, every morning, and anything left over at the end of the day rotted. My mom would have died <laughs> if she didn't have enough. When she died, we had three years worth of food left in all of her freezers. Because when she grew up, she didn't have no food. I think whether it might be she'd been dead like nine years, I think whether it's still eating on some of the food she put up. You know, it's... You know, some days, <clears throat> some days are like my recent trip to the ocean. I was out there fishing, standing in the water about waist deep, waves coming in and out, in and out. And I was out there in the water fishing, and, and you know, and you just, with, with two steel knees, you gotta, you got to kind of balance and work the waves and stuff. And so I was out there, you know, just kind of riding with the waves and fishing and stuff. And all of a sudden, I wasn't paying attention. And a wave came in that was a little bigger than the other ones. And it knocked me silly. 
I went down in the water. It knocked my glasses off. It broke my rod and reel. My hat started floating away. I got a mouthful of dirt. I come up out of the water, <laughs> and I was grabbing my glasses because they're expensive. I can't lose them. I can't see how I get out of the ocean when I'm. My rod and reel broke off in my hand, but I didn't lose it. And I got, but, but as strong as I am, and as sure-footed as I am, and knowing that I was in a place that could shift me around, it still knocked me down. There's going to be waves in your life that's going to knock you down. And you got a choice. You can lay there and drown, or you can get your butt up and get out of the water and fix your rod and reel, grab your hat, put your glasses back on, and walk to the beach. And keep fishing. And why? Verse 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. Why are you so stinking worried about your clothes or not? Why do you think you got to have a big old H on your pocket? What difference does it make whether it's members martyr? Whatever that H stands for. What does that H stand for in front of your shirt back there? Do you even know? Huh? Oh, it's under armor. Oh, so under armor, okay. A U and then an A. Looked like an H to me. <laughs> I said he was taking like a letterman's jacket. You're right. <laughs> 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 I meant, go oh, You know, what, 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 why do you wear clothes? Cover up my chubs. Cover up my chubs, all right. <laughs> If you're asking the wrong person about wearing my clothes, <laughs> stay warm. I mean, but, but we get so bent out of shape over clothes. What difference does it make if you get your clothes from Goodwill or some high dollar place? What difference does it make? They're clothes. They're to cover up your chub. Yep. Yes, sir. <laughs> but we spend so much time and effort going to make sure we got just the right clothes and take your grocery money off your table to make sure you got just the name right. And, and kids, I feel sorry for you because you go to school and you get made fun of if you ain't got the right clothes on. Yeah. Yep. I know I spent 20 years in school doing that. Why take you thought for it? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory wasn't arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God, there he is again. My goodness. There's that Heavenly Father God again. He just shows up with our clothes now. It ain't bad enough that he's sticking his nose in our food business. Now he's going to get involved in our clothes. If God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? In 1 Timothy chapter 6 and 7, it says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you ran into somebody that was content? See, God says godliness with contentment is great gain. But we're so uncontented. We're always dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. We're never just satisfied with what we got. And God said in the last days that Satan would blind the minds. Mm -hmm. See, it's like we started off. Most of your, most of your problem starts in your head. Yep. I'd venture to say all of your problem starts in your head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even your chub starts in your head because it goes through your mouth. <laughs> Things don't satisfy us. Because if things could satisfy, we about you know, first week of life, we'd be satisfied. Yeah. You know, she was sitting here a while ago, and just, I mean, she's what, like two months old? Three months. Three months. Three months old. And she's already dissatisfied about half the time. <laughs> and she don't even know what life is all about yet. Yeah. So what? You got a little pee in your diaper. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bother me, but I'll pee in my diaper. <laughs> you know? But they're dissatisfied. And we start kids out by teaching them how to be dissatisfied. Because they listen to us. And they watch us. <clears throat> the Bible says, 
Don't worry, but pray, and our hearts and minds will be at peace. You want peace? Yes. <laughs> he said, don't worry. Pray about everything. But see, we, we pray. Oh, we pray. But we worry. We worry about whether we pray right. Don't we? Well, did I say in Jesus' name? Or do I do? How do, how do I pray? Do I, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Or dear Heavenly Father, or dear Jesus, or respected elder in heaven. Am I praying the right way? Did I word it right, God? I've heard, I've heard, I'm glad Aunt Worship sang about she does. She says, you better be careful what you say. God's listening. <laughs> yeah, but he ain't going to beat me up because I say something. <laughs> In order for us to conquer an enemy, we have to know our enemy. Yeah. And most of our enemy and worry is anxiety. And most of the world is on some kind of anxiety medication. Anxiety. What is anxiety? No, the enemy. When I was in the retail business, we didn't study counterfeit bills. We studied the real ones so we would recognize the counterfeit. So what is anxiety? Stress of the mind. Stress of the mind. An active state of fear. Fearful of what? Pretty much everything. Some people are afraid of going to sleep. Some people are afraid of waking up. Some people are afraid of eating the right thing. Some people are afraid of eating the wrong thing. A prolonged sense of worry. Anxiety. A prolonged sense of worry. Always worried about something. Danielle was talking about a while ago, she hit a raccoon on the way in. Messed up her car. Okay. Have you checked out how many raccoons are on the highway every day, Daddy? There's plenty of them. They can spare a few. You go, you go back east and there's possums on. You know, I mean, when we came out here 25 years ago, going through Louisiana and, and Texas and down that way, I thought the roads were paved with armadillos. <laughs> Until I saw a couple of them moving. You know, we worry. A prolonged sense of worry. Gabby was always worried about me and, me and her mom leaving. Leaving or abandoning her. We left her in good hands. She had her sisters. <laughs> That's why she was worried. I can understand that. But we worry about stuff. She's 30 some years old. 26 years old, <laughs> give or take. And we have never abandoned her. And we never will. But she worried about it. Some of you worried about somebody coming in your house. How, how many of you ever robbed your house while you were in it? Nobody in this auditorium? I'm not talking about your husbands. But see, my house got robbed when I was growing up. My bedroom was connected to the back porch. And they came in and they took everything out of our freezer while I was sleeping in the bed beside them. They never bothered us. But I don't sit around and worry about somebody coming in my house. But some of you worry yourself silly about somebody going to come in, somebody going to come in. Get you a can of wasp spray and sit beside your bed <laughs> if you worry about it. You spray them in the eyes, they ain't going to see a thing. Those of you that are quite good with a handgun or a shotgun or something like that, get you one of them. If you're scared of them, put them down. You're yeah. going to get hurt. Yeah. If you're only 50% as good in an emergency situation, you are on your best day. Get you a baseball bat. Get you a can of wasp spray. Them 20-foot ones, you can spray them a long way away. I don't know where that came from, but anyway, you worry. <laughs> this is where, this is, this is get about 80% of you right here. Anticipating opposition or adversity. You're looking forward to something bad. 
Well, what if what if this happens? Ty used to ride around every time I get in the car with him. Papa, what if what if Papa, what if Papa, what if we have a flat tire? Papa, what if your motor blows up? Papa, what if we? Pop, what if? I told him one day. I said, "Boy, if you don't shut up with what if questions, you ain't never riding with me again." <laughs> 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 what if? <laughs> what if? Uh, best I remember, it says, "God knows what you need, and God will take care of you, and your heavenly Father feedeth them." Wherefore, take no thought. Lock your doors, get you a can of wash spray, turn your light on, protect yourself, get, but don't sit around all night worried about it. Dread. Dread. Some of you dread living. Some of you dread dying. An unsettled mind. The Bible says, uh, 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 idle mind is a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. That ain't even in the Bible. <laughs> a double minded man. That's the verse I was looking for. A double minded man is unstable in all of his ways. You know? This is, this is anxiety. This is what causes you grief. Know your enemy. When you identify the problem in your life, you can conquer the problem in your life. Mm -hmm. And stress of the mind, an active state of fear, prolonged sense of worry, anticipating opposition or adversity, dread, an unsettled mind, and then being filled with fear. Everything scares you. How are we going to overcome it? I'll give you four things. His sovereignty is my sanity. God's in charge. God has never left, lost control since the day he started this thing spinning. If you don't believe it, look at the solar system. How come there ain't planets flying off to the edges? You go down, we, we, we'll take a field trip one day as a church. We'll go down here to the park. We'll get on that little spinny thing out there in the park. Oh, my gosh. Oh. And, and you guys, will put all the ladies on it. <laughs> and we'll start, we'll line up around it and we'll start spinning. Oh, my gosh. Let's put the little kids on there. <laughs> And I'll guarantee you, if we get that thing spinning fast enough, some ladies will start shooting off to the sides. But God's never lost a planet. The sun's still right where it was when God put it up there. The moon's still right where it was. The earth is still going. Saturn, and I don't even think Pluto's a planet anymore, but it's still going. You know? God is in control. Com commit. Commit your future. To him. Whatever happens. Whether it's your health, whether it's your finances, whether it's your job, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your home, whatever it is, give it to God. It's his anyway. Give it to God. You have to realize that you not your neighbor, not your fellow church member, not your family member, but you are God's greatest concern. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten. There is nothing in God's world any more important than you are. You see, look at the birds, look at the fowls of the air, look at the flowers, look at the lilies. God takes care of them, but how much more important are you than those? Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. God is not out to get you. Satan is, and God ain't going to let him. God's hand is stretched out to help you, and who's going to be strong enough to knock God's hand away? Do you think Satan is strong enough to hinder God's plan in your life? Do you think Satan is strong enough to say, God, you're not going to have him or her? No. We have to give God total, 100% control in every aspect of our life. We are great at giving God control in parts of our life. 
But we all have that room that we don't allow God in. It may be forgiveness in a certain area. It may be guilt in a certain area. It may be worry in a certain area. But we all have that room that we don't give God access to. When we finally give God access to that room, we'll be okay. When we give God total control, Verse 31, therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewithal we're going to be clothed? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. And your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added in need. Therefore take no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take, care, take thought for the things of itself. Verse 33 again, seek ye first the kingdom of God. It's not clothes, it's not food, it's not shelter, it's not God. God knows you got need of those things, and He promised He'd take care of those things. You want to go into Christmas discouraged? You keep on worrying, you keep on fretting. You keep on taking control of things you got no business to take control of. Or if you want to go into Christmas victorious, turn it over to God. Now, I know that you can't stop the thoughts. But you can battle them with Scripture like Jesus did. There's another, I think I preached a sermon on it years ago. You can't stop the birds from flying over your head, but you can stop them from building a nest in your hair. So you can't stop the thoughts from coming in. But you can you can you can take control of the thoughts that stay in. You can't stop the birds from flying over your head, but you can stop them from building a nest in your hair. One of the best ways that I've found in my life, every night before I go to bed, I either listen to a sermon or I listen to some Christian music or I read my scriptures, or I pray. I fall, I, used to, I used to feel guilty when I'd fall asleep praying. And then I got to thinking about it. When a baby, you know, that little baby over there, three months old, curled up against mom's chest, probably got a clean diaper now, <laughs> full of food. And it's just laying there in the most comfortable place in all of the world, in her mama's arms. What better place for us to fall asleep than resting in Jesus' arms, talking to him? So I don't feel guilty about falling asleep praying no more. I actually think it's pretty cool. There's going to be days. You're going to have those days. You're going to have those days when that wave is going to knock you right off your feet. And you're going to be sucking up sand and blowing water. But get up. There's going to be days when the birds are going to be flying all around your head every which way. But don't let them land. Don't let them land. Because when they land, then they start bringing straw in. And horse hair in. And pieces of ribbon in. And then they start shaping. And pretty soon you got a nest of swallows over your front door. <laughs> crapping on your door handle. And instead of getting rid of them, you build a little shelf for them to put their nest on. Aww, such a nice pastor we have. And so you welcome them into your life instead of getting rid of them before they ever start building the nest. See, some of you would be totally lost without your worry, without your fears, without your taking thought. You wouldn't have anything to do if you didn't have to worry. You wouldn't know how to spend your day if you didn't fret. Don't go into Christmas discouraged. Go into Christmas this year with the, with the knowledge that God's got this. Whatever this happens to be, God has got this.